how do you get your inspiration? Like being in a city like Singapore, we're not very uh, uh, open to a lot of art. You know, people are usually just chasing the money, the Pisces, whatever. How do you get your inspiration? Uh, from everywhere. And thankfully, I'm in Singapore. We get cultures and influence from all over the world. And then I start to like work on it again and try to make the best out of everything. Uh, I mean, I'm a big uh, movie fan. Big, I'm a video gamer. I like to read comics and stuff like that. I think, you know, I mean, you can get inspiration from basically anywhere, man. Okay, you're a big movie fan and a uh, big comic book fan. What do you think of Watchmen? Two thumbs up. Okay, in an industry, in this art industry, you, you got to stay current or you got to be like forward thinking. How does one like you like stay current? I think you've got to like ignore trends. You've got to just sort of go with your instincts. And I mean, that's... That's the only way, that's the only advice I could give to stay current is to just do something that no one's done before, you know, and you experiment. Yeah. It's like uh, being a trendsetter. I work in a nightclub and then uh, we do a lot of research, we set the trend and uh, we explore from there. And then, yeah, that's how things are being created for myself. Yeah. And then uh, I'm glad that people like it and then just move on. Uh, I guess with the internet, you can basically look at you know whatever is happening overseas and stuff like that. So staying current, I guess you have to build your uh, how do you call it visual content up here. You gotta current uh, always look at magazine, look look at the up and coming trends. You know, look at what big brands are doing with to their stuff. I think that really enriches uh, an artist's mind. Okay, um, you've been in Singapore the past six years, you've worked here a while. What is your take on the Singapore art industry? Ah, it's cool, it's growing. I mean, when I first arrived, there was little glimmer of hope and, and that's proved to be quite like valid. It's been uh, it's fun and it's, it's going to be good to watch in the next few years. I think it's still small, but it's really growing. You can see like initiatives like Tiger Translate bring local creatives all the way to overseas just to, you know, for exposure. I think it's starting to pick up yeah. big time. So it's, it's small still, it's still infancy. It's it's small but it's strong. Yeah. Uh, all I can say is based on my own view that the arts, in, arts, arts in Singapore is like building up. More and more kids are like joining like of course like Noise Singapore, Tiger Translate and then of course online completions, submissions and stuff. It's building, it's building. It's just probably too young right now. If you are what you say you are, a superstar, then have no fear. The camera's here and the microphones and they wanna know. Oh, oh, oh. If you are what you say you are, a superstar. Did you be able to tell everyone um, the schools that you went to or do you just pick it up by yourself? Uh, I actually went to uh, Nanyang Poly yeah, for my education in uh, Diploma in Digital Media Design. Alright man, I was also from Nanyang Polytechnic DMD. I was batch 2001. That means I was the third batch to ever graduate from DMD. Yeah? Yeah. I don't recognize you. What year were you from? I think 1000. Uh. You're 2000? Yeah. That means you were one batch before me. Is it? I think so. Hey, then I'm your senior, man. Hey, you're my senior. Not bad, I'm interviewing you. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> make a connection. How's, how's your connection with Ben? Because you guys went to the same school, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, basically, Actually, both you and me went to the same school, so, right? Okay, keep it like a secret. Yeah. Yeah. So your creative minds, like, you know, we all in the media industry, you know? Of course, man, bro. Do you collaborate with other people, or are you just like an individual by yourself? Yeah, I do collaborate a lot with Zero, with Killer with my crew, like gig designers, and then uh, with a lot, a lot of international artists and stuff like this. Okay, uh, basically, me and Ben, we came from a same design collective called the gig designers. Okay. And then we do like from animations to web design to print to graffiti to anything anything that inspires or yeah anything that generates money and interest um any any favorite uh homegrown artists you you, you sort of like oh, yeah, yeah i got some really good uh friends andy yang and uh, e sean they're, they're a couple of mates and they're doing some some great stuff and some of the guys here are going to be uh young but they're like, amazing you know so five six years is going to be ridiculously cool yeah like really nice do you collaborate with any of the other artists here like steve or ben 
uh, of course a lot of time with Ben and Zero and then of course Steve we do chill out and hang out and talk a lot of nonsense. We talk a lot of nonsense. Yeah, he's quite an interesting fellow I, I might add. What is one thing about the industry, bad or good, that you can share with anyone out there who's not familiar with the art industry? Okay, um... It doesn't pay that well, but you know, if you're doing it, it's generally like something that you love to do. So it's quite, you know, a passionate job. Um, what was the question? <laughs> okay, what is the one thing that people need to know about the industry, good or bad? You can you can complain. Um, I guess, I guess right now a lot of young kids think it's cool to be a designer and artist and stuff like that. But the main fact, yeah, you really gotta sacrifice the hours to become good. Yeah, so it's not like. I don't think it's a face value sort of thing. You really have to like, you know, spend sleepless nights just doing, working on your craft. Yeah, I think that's the misconception young kids get now these days. I think like the crucial thing for anyone like studying graphics or visual communication is like you don't have to go into advertising. There's there's lots of things you can do, and there's lots of new opportunities arising for someone who's got a vision and some nice ideas and the skills to visualize them. Yeah. What is the one thing about the industry which people have to know? Like, Is it, is it a very tough industry? Um, is it very re uh, relentless? Is it uh, long hours? Does it pay well? What, what, what about industry which you have to tell? Yeah, it's everything what you say. Uh, all I can like say is uh, it's really tough. It's not easy at all and stay true to your passion. This is the only drive that keeps me and my friends moving on. Uh, I mean, if you're good, definitely you'll pay lah. Yeah, but if you suck, then you bet man, you gotta work harder. Does it pay well? Yeah, really good. Really good yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough, huh? Okay. How do you make a name for yourself being an up-and-coming artist as, as yourself? There are some people who are just starting out right now. How, how can they go about making a name for yourself? Do they post their stuff online? Uh, join competitions? What? Yeah, I think having a website is the first thing you've got to do. Second, you got to look up for initiatives like Tiger Translate, you know. Uh, you got to show people what you, you have done, you know. I think uh, competition is also uh, one, one area to explore. Everything is like selling yourself in any ways. Sell your art, sell yourself, be a cam hall, do anything. But uh, most important thing, do the right thing. Yeah. What is the right thing for uh, you? Do not sell yourself, stay true to your art, and then don't compromise too much and stuff like that. How does one make a name for themselves? All the up, up and coming like graphic artists, how do you make, itself, make a name for themselves? Join competitions, get a, a blog, what? Yeah, that's cool. I mean, get online. I mean, you know, not just locally, but internationally, that's a great way of meeting contacts. Enter competitions, submit your work to magazines, do a magazine, you know, like all that is, is a good way of just getting your work out there. Yeah. Um, what is your advice to all the up and coming uh, gra uh, graphic designers out there who want to be, who look at you and say, you know what, I can be the, I can be this guy. Um, what's your advice to them? Uh, just stay true yourself, stick to your passion, and just do whatever you want, whether it's right or wrong. Learn from your mistakes and move on, man. So I, I think the main thing for aspiring young artists is to just keep on doing your stuff. Don't let anybody say no to you. Just do it. Yeah. You've got to put your neck on the line, and if people don't like your work, then. Boom, you're dead. But like, you can always try something else, and you can try a different style, and and that's kind of the fun of it, you know. Get feedback, and then and then and try again. Um, of all the projects you've done, what is the, your favorite project? Your favorite art piece? My favorite art piece. Uh, I mean, it depends. Uh, every art piece to me is uh, it's not my favorite. I mean, it's uh, you can never have a favorite art piece, you know, because uh, being an artist, it's all uh, it's a journey more than anything else. So each piece you. You learn something, you know, you like something from one piece. After a while you hit it, then you just move on. Do you think do you think graphic design will be accepted like uh, fine art? Uh, can you like uh, make a piece and then do uh, a print a limited amount of quantities and then sell it off for a higher price? Uh, do you think accepted now? I, I, hmm. Do you think like graphic design right now could be treated like fine art where you can sort of like print like limited quantities of your work and sell them? Absolutely, I mean it already is. Uh, and there's a nice... Well, it's good news for us because we're not that good at painting, but we're excellent at designing, like you know, things in the computer or silk screen. You know, that's so. Yeah, I see definite growth there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is possible. In fact, a couple of people are doing it right now. And um, have you done it yourself? 
not yet. I'm not really confident in my art, selling my art yet. And then uh, I, of course, have to go really in depth into concept and stuff like this before I dare to sell anything. But you're doing pretty well, right? This is like almost like a, like your own gallery opening sort of sort of thing, right? I just do it, man. Yeah. Good question. I think it's possible. Yeah, but uh, you have to have an seed idea of what you want to, you know, tell people. You know? Yeah. You you're gonna do a silk screen for for me right now, right? Yeah. yeah. In a while. If you are what you say you are, a superstar, then have no fear. The camera's here and the microphones and they wanna know. Oh oh oh. If you are what you say you are, a super. I want to know like your dream project, something which you always want to do and money isn't an option, what would you do? I suppose I'd like to design um, a flag for a country or maybe even design a country man, whatever, you know, that would be cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is your dream project, your number one dream project, which, okay, money is not an option here, dream project, what will you do? Uh, of course, collaborate with uh, big name artists, brands and celebrities, like singers, like while they're doing their gig, I'm doing my stuff and stuff, yeah. What is your dream project, something you haven't done and you always wanted to do, and money's not an option? Tiger will take care of it. <laughs> I guess it's a solo exhibition, I guess. Yeah. Isn't it what, like what you're doing now? Okay, this is not a solo exhibition, but it's almost there, right? It's, it's almost there. Let's, let's see how it's okay. When do you think your solo exhibition will come about? Next year? Hopefully. Yeah. If you are what you say you are.